Hey, I'm Dave from Boy in a Band. Recently I was looking around the internet when I found a video telling me you are not depressed, stop it, with an angry looking guy in the thumbnail who I recognised. This is Prince E. He's a YouTuber and rapper who has more recently started making content which is motivating and inspiring, according to himself. You've probably seen some of the more successful stuff on Facebook. His spoken word videos have gone freaking crazy viral. Now at first glance it looks like he's spreading a good message, but underneath the surface there are some really fundamental things he's doing which struck me as seriously dodgy, and watching the video behind the angry thumbnail pushed me over the edge, so today I'm calling out Princey on several things I think he's doing wrong. <laughs> First, that video. Okay, so it's obvious clickbait and that's understandable. We've all got to do what we've got to do to compete with BuzzFeed, you know what I'm But the problem I had was within the content. You are not depressed. Stop saying that. Did he just say that? I'm so mad. I'm seriously going to go off on this guy in the comments. Oh, snap. I got people mad already, ready to go off on me in the comments. How did he know? You may be experiencing a depression right now, but you are not depressed. See, you are the sky. Depression, frustration, sadness, these are passing clouds. They come, they go. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop you there. No, depression does not always go. See, it looks like you're mixing up this Wikipedia page with this one. Depressed can be a mood like sadness or frustration, but depressed can also refer to major depressive... Freaking major depressive disorder. A mental disorder people are genetically predisposed to. I'll let this professor from Stanford University explain it. It's a biochemical disorder with a genetic component and early experience influences where somebody can't appreciate sunsets. And that's what this disease is about. Seriously, well worth watching the full thing. Small Hagrid has some great insight. So let's see what else Prince has to say. Now pause the video right now and take some time with this. This is life-changing. If you have to tell someone something is life-changing, then it probably isn't that life-changing. You are the witness, the perceiver of depression. And that which perceives depression is not depressed. Okay, I get what you're trying to say. If you treat your emotions and thoughts as if you were a passive observer, you're more likely to be able to live with them. This is at the core of a type of scientifically backed therapy, which my therapist did, called ACT. I actually emailed one of the people who created the therapy, Stephen Hayes, who sent me a bunch of studies with evidence of it being effective. But there are a lot of people who are stuck with brains that do not let their sadness go. And this is why this part of his video is so problematic. See, imagine this remote control is depression. So you got you, and then you got depression. Depression comes, it goes, it comes, it stays for a while. It goes. For those people who have the mental disorder, it's like saying to someone in the middle of a heart attack, you don't have heart attacks. You may be experiencing a heart attack, but you do not have heart attacks. Heart attacks come, they go. And judging from the comments, it's not just me who felt strongly about this. In fact, one of his fans uploaded a response video which really explained this well. First of all, thank you for being an incredible force for change. It's fantastic, but um, dude, if this is depression and you had been in my house yesterday, I would have thrown the fucking thing at you. Uh, it's not a choice that people make. It's a shift in perception that's caused by, or has its basis in biochemistry. What you're saying there, I think almost even errs on the side of being a little bit dangerous for, for folks. But I thought I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he just messed up up once with this topic, until I found another video where he mentions the same concept with some more mistakes. See this world we live in, it, it creates depression. For the mood, yes. For the mental illness, no. Sunsets. This is where the damaging part comes in. See everybody suffers from depression. There's always this little voice between the lines there of come on, pull yourself together, we all deal with this sort of thing. This video is going to encourage that voice in depressed people, which makes them feel inadequate. Everyone else has it come and go, but not me. That's the kind of thing that could contribute to the statistic he referenced at the start of this video. Did you know that in 10 years, depression will be the leading cause of death? Hang on, really? Even over heart disease or cancer? That seems really freaking high. Let me check his sources. Oh wait, there isn't one. Wait, is it here? Now what about under here? Behind this? Here? What the hell is it? And this is the next problem. The guy references studies all over the place. I read a study yesterday. Study showed it. There was a study done, a hospital study. At a rate of 40 football fields every minute. But I can't find his sources any freaking where. Not in the description, not on his Facebook posts, not hidden in the background of his videos. Wait, what's that? Oh, it's just Bigfoot, full salam. <laughs> so I have no idea whether what he's saying is just made up, like in his video, Can We Autocorrect Humanity? Did you know the average person spends four years of his life looking down at his cell phone? Wow, really? Well, I'd love to research this to contribute to the conversation, but I can't because you don't cite the freaking source! And this made me wonder just how much scientific misinformation is this guy just casually throwing out there? So I started to check. Studies show the attention span of the average adult today is one second lower 
than that of a goldfish. Now this struck me as absolute crap and it turns out that's because it's absolute crap. The closest I could find to a source that he might be referencing was a marketing brochure saying, the average time a user spends to digest information has decreased significantly over the past 12 years from 12 seconds in 2000 to eight seconds in 2012 less than the average attention span of a goldfish. And after hours of searching, I couldn't find the actual study at all. But even if we put aside for the moment the fact that he's citing a study that doesn't seem to exist, it still means absolutely bugger all. Because the study measured how long internet users spent on each page before moving on to the next one. It might show that websites load faster now, or that there's more crap on the internet that we have to wade through before finding the good stuff but it does not show that people are incapable of paying attention to important messages, which the next part of the video suggests. So if you're one of the few people or aquatic animals that have yet to click off or close this video, congratulations. Congratulations. And not only did he mess up the part about human attention spans, but the goldfish part is also wrong. Here are two studies proving they can remember things for months. And if that's not your thing, even freaking Mythbusters did an episode proving it wrong. 30 seconds I think is pretty good to make it through four holes. It's it's clear that they've learned, and it's clear that they do, in fact, have a memory longer than three seconds. Myth busted. I just don't know how many more layers of wrongness it's possible to pile onto one sentence, except maybe this one. <sighs> Now that one was just a random fact trying to strengthen his point, but some of the things he claims have worse consequences. A line that made me freaking shake with frustration was Videos are six seconds at high speed and you wonder why ADD is on a rise. Okay, so as you might say, Stop saying that. Now here, I know you didn't do any research, not just because you called it ADD when it's been known in the psychological community as ADHD since 1987, but also ADHD is one of the most freaking genetic mental disorders. I contacted one of the world's leading ADHD experts, Dr. Russ Barkley, who told me that and then explained 70 to 80% is the result of differences in genetics across the entire population. It exceeds the genetic variation in any psychological trait. If you have an identical twin with ADHD, the risk to you is 75 to 90, 94% roughly. So does watching short videos cause ADHD? But we found no real evidence of purely social factors that can explain this disorder. It, it really behaves very much like a biological trait. ADHD is freaking horrible. It's essentially being trapped in your own brain, unable to control yourself like normal people can. This guy is spreading a lie that people could avoid it if they just stopped using their phones, rather than the truth that it is one of the most treatable genetic disorders with medication. And this from a guy who, according to himself, is making smart cool. I'm gonna make smart cool again. That is definitely not smart and it is definitely not cool. So why would he do this? Well, if we take a look later in this video, it brings me to the final issue with Princey. Oh, Princey, oh, Princey, Princey. Oh. <laughs> Princey makes things seem a lot worse than they actually are, so people get emotional enough to share it. Mr. Zuckerberg, not to be rude, but you should reclassify Facebook to what it is, an anti-social network. So because some people are not using Facebook in a healthy way, the entire site, which has allowed billions of people to keep in touch across countries, is anti-social. He gives no sense of nuance to the argument, and he often just totally lies. Technology has made us more selfish and separate than ever. Here are several sources which found charitable giving has been growing for decades, but I'd love to see what you base your point on, but oh wait, you didn't cite the source anyway! The news is 140 characters I could have sworn that technology let us freely share our footage and research The news is 140 characters Issues like police brutality which never The news is 140 characters Twitter didn't stop The news is 140 Okay, okay, what else is wrong? No longer do I wanna spoil a precious moment by recording it with a phone Wanna spoil a precious moment Precious moment by precious mo moment by recording it with a phone I'm just gonna keep them I've noticed this is a surprisingly popular opinion, but I just don't get what's wrong with it. What if you want to share it with someone who couldn't be there? Or if you have a bad memory? Or if, heaven forbid, you enjoy looking at photos? I don't want to take a picture of all my meals anymore, I'm just gonna eat them! I don't see the appeal of taking pictures of food either, but some people seem to enjoy it. What's wrong with that? Just don't follow them on Instagram. I don't want the new app, the new software, or the new update. Well, in that case, your cybersecurity is going to be severely compromised. And if I want to post an old photo... Hang on, you just said you don't... The news is 100 140 characters. Oh, my mistake. And it ends on this big point. I imagine a world where we smile when we have low batteries. Because that'll mean we'll be one bar closer to humanity.
The implication here is that technology prevents humanity. How many films or songs have made you emotional? How many online conversations make people happy? Your own videos, judging from the response, make people emotional, which is very human. And he went even further in another video entitled, Why I Think This World Should End. Technology has given us everything we could ever want and at the same time stolen everything we really need, really need, need really need. Freaking everything around us is technology. Easily accessible food, your freaking polo shirt. What's the cutoff point for you? 1846? Was the penny farthing a step too far? What? He continues to monger fear. It's easier to find a Big Mac than an apple. No, it isn't. There are more supermarkets than McDonald's. Where are you looking for fruit? Also, you can get apples at McDonald's. Just ask. When you find the apple, it's been genetically processed and modified. We've been genetically modifying things for centuries. Bananas used to look like this. Do you want that? Do you want to eat that, Princey? There's more violence on the screen than ever before. And yet, this is the least violent period in human history. Today, we are probably living in the most peaceful time in our species' existence. Death rate goes down from 65,000 in the 1950s to less than 2,000 deaths in this decade. There's so much of this crap. He makes it seem like the world is getting worse and worse, when in a lot of ways, we're improving. But that's not a shareable poetry video, is it? <laughs> Now this point I have is what made me stop thinking this could just be unintentional and made me question if he respects his audience at all. So on Facebook, different post types get different promotion by Facebook's algorithm. So Facebook can make the most money. Things which keep people on the site for longer are promoted, like videos and posts, and links which take people off the site don't. So that's why I upload most of my videos to Facebook directly rather than just linking to the YouTube video. And Prince E does this himself by uploading his videos to Facebook and YouTube separately. Now I noticed something weird on Prince E's Facebook. Very often he linked to articles articles externally instead of making posts directly on Facebook. Now I wondered why he wouldn't just post directly to Facebook or stick with the motivational quote pictures which he slaps his name on to get a bit more exposure, and then I realised most of the articles were from the same few websites. Most were plastered with ads and some of them were focused on selling something. And when you see what this clickbait crap is, it gets worse. I found this article written for Prince EA, whatever that means, on this site titled Six Signs You're in the Presence of a Deceased Family Member. So they're getting money by lying to desperate bereaved people and spamming their pages with ads. I might understand if this was a few articles which he'd made a mistake about, but this is systematic. It's freaking daily. So I wondered, hang on, is he getting paid for this? Isn't he supposed to disclose when he's paid to endorse something? So I looked it up. In America, where he's from, the FTC monitors how legal this stuff is. I found the FTC guidelines saying, say you're planning a vacation. You do some research and find a glowing review on someone's blog that a particular resort is the most luxurious place he's ever stayed. If you knew the hotel had paid the blogger hundreds of dollars to say great things about it, it could affect how much weight you'd give the blogger's endorsement. The blogger should, therefore, let his readers know about that relationship. But maybe he actually is just sharing articles regularly which decreases his Facebook ranking and potential audience growth, until I saw some of them were written by him. And the FTC guidelines also had a Q&A section which had this part. I work for a terrific company. Can I mention our products to people in my social networks? You should make sure that your relationship is disclosed to people who read your online postings about your company or its products. Either he's writing a lot of unpaid clicks clickbait articles, or he's making money by misleading his audience every day. And as he said repeatedly, he's really smart. I'm gonna make smart cool again. Now perhaps I missed something, which is entirely possible, but it seems seriously fishy to me. One of the most frustrating things about all this is that fundamentally, I like that he's trying to do good in the world. He clearly makes a lot of people happy and inspired, even if he does say so himself, and has raised some great awareness with a few of his videos. But these vague generalizations with no scientific backing just make it impossible to trust what he's saying. And what's worse is there are plenty of other issues which he could address which are a lot less vague and still incredibly important. And since Princey has called out individuals in the past to give constructive criticism, I thought this might be the most appropriate way to address him. I read a study the other day. It said be careful when you're listening to Prince EA. I'm not gonna cite it in case you criticize it, but they'll be tried to summarize it anyway. It said if some guy makes wild, unsourced claims and never provides citations for what he states and tries to drum up fear over what's not a big deal, then be skeptical as hell of what he's saying. Calling everyone's depression the same. Are you insane? 
Guess not, there were these one psychiatrists would have explained It can't always just be thought out of Jesus It's a chemical imbalance, please first do some research And saying ADD is caused by media consumption You're kinda hard to trust with such incorrect presumptions A mountain of evidence is that it is genetic And man, it's ADHD Don't you listen to Kendrick? And you won't recall precious moments on the phone? I suppose you hated the moment you posed for this photo with Oprah You hippie hypocrite, but a backtrack lickety split Deleted all of it quick, we're causing society's downfall Technology's out to get us, put down your phones, they're devious Oh, and before you do, follow me on social media You hate media overstimulation Wait, look, how many spam articles are you posting on Facebook? But I've got to give congratulations for picking a videographer good enough to distract from the inaccurate crap you're saying Fear mongering over the state of the world to seem clever When several of the things you said are better than ever We are way less selfish and we're safer than historically And what made that possible? Oh yeah, technology, human curiosity, man that is humanity What isn't is spreading misinformation that's damaging Now I'm not perfect, I bet I have some citations missed But I try to be consistent and if it isn't, then I'll fix it I like your aim to bring attention to important issues And if you fix things you'd be great, hell that's why I thought to diss you But if you won't listen to me, maybe you'll listen Listen to one of your fans who left this comment trying to help you understand Saying, even though I really like your thoughts and attitude Gonna unfollow cause of clickbait ads and lack of scientific proof Peace